Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I wanted to show you how to create an alpha plant. As you can imagine, trees and plants take a lot of geometry, but in the industry, they use alpha maps to give you a sense that a plant exists. If you guys want to download this tutorial, you're more than welcome to. Um, I have the files and source images at academicphoenixplus.com. The first thing I'd like to do is create a pot. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my front view. I'm going to go to Create Curve Tools, EP Curve Tool. And I'm just going to make myself a quick little pot. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of drag a little. You can always fix that in a second. And maybe go along here, a little base, and end it here. Press Enter. Control right click, control vertices. You can go ahead and tweak the vertices so our, it's not set in stone. So don't don't hesitate about grabbing these vertices and kind of tweaking it a little bit more, just making sure that it looks a little bit more rounded. Right click object mode. Let's go to the main area. Now I'm going to revolve this. The key to revolving is that I'm working on the center of the grid and my curve actually goes around it. So over here under surfaces we're going to go to revolve and this is my pot. So now the other challenge though is that right now this is a NURB so I'm going to convert it. Modify, convert, NURBs to polygon options. Just make sure control point is selected and then tessellate. Okay, you can see that at this time, this is what it looks like. If I press 3, it looks more like it's companion here. By the way, this can still be influenced, so if you wanted to make some changes to the curve or anything, you still can. I'm going to go ahead and convert my normals because right now they're going the wrong way. I'm going to go to Mesh Display, Reverse. There we go, that looks better. So now I can go to the curve. Let me hide this one, actually. There we go. Right click, Control Vertex. And the fun thing is that this is still being manipulated by the curve itself, so you can still tweak it. Once you delete the history though, it becomes permanent, so just be very careful about that. So it's up to you if you want to keep tweaking it. I'm going to just go ahead and just make it a, a little bit more realistic. Let's go ahead and go to object mode. Now if I want to keep this permanent, I go to edit, delete by type history. Now when I manipulate the curve, it's not going to be affected because I deleted the connection. And I'm going to hide it just in case I need it back. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Okay, so this is going to be my potted plant. So next I'm going to create a stem so that uh, there's actually something to put the leaves on. This is just a regular cylinder. I'm going to go to my inputs and increase my height. Give myself a little bit of geometry. Alright, I think it's a little high poly on the subdivision axis. I'm going to drop that down to 12. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's organic, so just kind of make sure that you uh, move things around a little bit so um, it looks organic, you know, it's, uh, it's on all directions. Just make sure you manipulate it in different directions so that it looks a little bit more because stem, you just want to make sure that it actually is flawed. That's what makes it real when it's flawed. But I'm going to cover this with leaves, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. Edit, delete by type history. Modify, freeze transformations. I'm going to go ahead and save before something terrible happens to my scene. So let's get to the, the fun part. So what I really want to do is create leaves using alpha maps. I'm going to grab a plane and I'm going to scale it. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. I also like to reduce the geometry to 1, so subdivision width and height to 1. Let's see, edit, delete by type, history, modify, freeze transformations. So UVs, planner map, options. We're going to use a Y axis because it's going up and down. Make sure the keep image width and the height ratio is on and apply. Let's take a look at our UVs. Go to object mode. Let's try that again. Object mode. All right. So we have our UVs. It's in a 0 to 1 space. 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And let's go ahead and export it. Let's go to image, UV snapshot. It's really important that you always set your project. I already set mine, so I know that it's going to put it in my images. So this is going to be my leaf. UV snap. 2048 is a little high. I'm going to go to 1024. Probably that's too high too, but we'll just leave it like that. We can always reduce it. Make sure it's a TIFF and click OK. Let's go to Photoshop. All right, so now I'm going to go to images and open up my UV snap. Here's my UV snap. And the first thing I always do is go to channels and delete the alpha one because uh, I don't need transparencies. I'm going to make my own. Here's my layers. I'm going to double click on this and change this to UV snap. So I know this is my UV snap. Create a new layer. 
bring that underneath and I also like to uh, change this to screen just take a look at my previous tutorials on how to texture and this shows you how to actually texture uh, this is kind of like a more advanced lesson so just keep that in mind that I'm just gonna fly through this a little bit okay so we change this to screen so what screen does is is uh, if I paint on this you can actually see behind underneath the UV snap Oops, let me undo that there we go now I'll lock it select this two uh, these are the areas that you're not gonna see I like to make sure that I cover it in gray so I know that I'm not gonna use it so modify contract I usually use 10 pixels and then I create a new one and I'm going to use 50% gray. That was a shift backspace, 50% gray. This is going to be called my border. All right, so that lets me know that this is, no one's going to see this aspect of it. Keeps it nice and solid, no extra information, and this is where all the magic happens. All right, now I already have a leaf, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the leaf here. This is a PNG, so it has transparencies. Let's go ahead and control A, control C, control V, control T. You guys get all that? Now the tricky part is how do we make sure the transparencies get seen. So when you're working with alpha maps, you gotta make sure that there's a little bit of a border between he, uh, between the actual leaf and the background. And the reason why is because when it has this anti-alias, that can cause some problems. So what I usually do for my background layer is uh, shift backspace. I'm gonna use my foreground, click OK. And you can see that there's a little bit of a green line. That's actually your anti-alias. So if I scroll in here, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of a white and that's a little white dot. And that's actually Photoshop trying to help you kind of blend things together naturally. But unfortunately, when we're trying to do alpha maps, we don't want that blend. Select my leaf. So control click on this little thumbnail. Select, modify, contract, and probably just one pixel I'm gonna contract and then I'm going to delete it. Oops, control shift I, which is invert and then delete. That should hopefully get rid of most of the anti-alias. All right, let's say that we want to make an alpha map. Let's go ahead and control click on this little thumbnail. Let's go to channels and there's this little button right here. We're going to click on that. That's going to create an alpha map for us automatically. So that's really convenient. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and save. We can always change it. That's why we keep layers. Let me save that as a PSD actually so I have my layers because I am going to flatten it. Layer flatten image. Yes, for discarding and control shift S and then go to TIFFs. Again, I like TIFFs. It's going to replace this one. That's okay. Click yes. And okay. Let's go back to Maya. Right click, assign new material. I'm going to use a Lambert for now. I can always convert it. Let's go to my Lambert 2. This is going to be my leaf. I'm going to go to color, file. And it automatically goes to source images, so I should have Control Shift S save this into my source images. So here's my leaf color. I'm going to turn off layers, save. Okay. Let's go back to Maya. There it is. Great. Press the number six. If it has an alpha map, it automatically grabs it into the transparencies, which is great. Now, let's say you want to use the AI standard material. So instead of a Lambert, let's use the more advanced one or the new one for Maya 2017, which is the Arnold shader. Okay, here's a little troubleshooting, guys. Uh, notice that my Arnold is missing here. Um, it could be multiple ways why my Arnold just uh, kind of disappeared, but it's really easy to turn it on. Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and I have to scroll down until I see this thing called MTOA, which is Maya 2 Arnold. Go ahead and load that. Assign a new material. Here's the Arnold, just like that, and let's grab the uh, AI standard. All right, so we have this little guy right here. I'm gonna edit, delete my history here. I just want my tabs to be smaller. Let's go to color. You see how it's diffuse color? Click on the little checker. Go to file. Go to the little folder. Grab on TIFF. And right away you can see the difference between a Lambert and the AI standard. You can see that it doesn't connect to the transparency right away. Very similar to a lot of other 3D packages, we actually have to create a separate map for an for transparency. And I already have one and it's right here. This is what we need. Pretty simple to to make this. I'm going to go back here. What I'm going to do is double click on my layer 2. I'm going to use color overlay and I'm going to change this to white. Layer 1. Click on D on your keyboard to go to default. Shift backspace foreground color. Click OK. That's going to turn it black. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my borders. And there you go. Easy peasy. Control Shift S. I'm going to save this as a PSD for now. This is going to be my alpha. And then, of course, I'm going to go to my source images. Make sure this is a TIFF. Leaf alpha, no layers, save. Okay. All right, going back to Maya. Now, 
under the AI standard, I'm going to go ahead and collapse everything. What I'm looking for is actually a uh, refraction and you can see that there's an opacity. Let's go ahead and click on that little folder, go to file and then grab our leaf alpha. You're going to notice that nothing seems to have changed. Let's go to Arnold and go ahead and render it out. This is what happens with Arnold. You can't see anything. So let's create some lights. So create lights. Uh, I'm going to use two directional lights. Usually when I light, I usually just go one way this direction, really fast lighting, like just so I can see what's going on. Another direction and maybe just reduce this a little bit. The intensity can be a little heavy because there's two directional lights. So let's go ahead and reduce that. And now when we go to Arnold and render, which is over here, you can see the leaf. Now that I place it on the environment, you can see that it's black. You might be asking, well, what happened to the alpha map? We seem to have done everything right. What's interesting about Arnold is it's actually a very sophisticated shader. So let's go ahead and select this guy right here. So we're going to go to our shape notes right here. There is an Arnold tab right here. So we'll open that up and then do you see how it says opaque? Turn that off. Right away, you can see the difference. There's the, uh, let me move this so you guys can see it. There it is. Now you can see that uh, the plant now is transparent. So perfect. I'm going to shift. Insert edge loop tool. Just I'm going to clean up my mess just a little bit. So I'm going to clean this up by adding a couple of edges like that. Like that one delete. So like that one and delete. And I'm also going to move my pivot point over here. So it's going to make it easier for me to place it. Then I'm going to scale it down because it's tiny. It's a leaf after all. I'm snapping it. So V middle mouse snap. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Just one sad looking leaf, but that's okay. We're going to make a bunch. Another thing is that this is really flat. So shift right click, insert edge loop tool. And I actually like to give it a little bit of depth, just a little bit. Just give it a little bit of depth. It's going to make a big difference. All right, let's add another one. Just maybe grab some vertices. Move this up. Maybe move this to the left a little bit. Just give it a little bit of may not seem like much, but it's going to look a little bit more realistic. So how to duplicate this? Control D, rotate. I have, uh, you know, leaves are different sizes and scales, so I always recommend that you, uh, you know, make it different scales, you know, like just kind of create a little, a little bundle of leaves. Make sure again that they're rotated in different directions. Control D, I'm, I'm literally just, Control Ding away. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And then scale them several directions. And of course, you want to kind of take a look at it and see how does it look. And you can see that I'm get starting to get a, a bunch of leaves. I also like to Control D and I'm going to rotate these. And it's fun because they still, you can see that automatically I'm going to get different rotations. That's going to be really helpful as I start placing these up and down the, the branch. So I'm going to move this down a little bit, maybe scale it a little bit, control D, go up, the, start going up the tree and it's going to take me forever. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, duplicate, move it up, move it to the side, make sure everything's somewhat matching. Again, just kind of rotate things around, rotate it and you just continue that until you have a plant. This potted plant needs a pot. So let me assign material. This is going to be an AI standard. Click on this. And I already have a, uh, a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And right away you can see that this isn't really working. And part of it is because of the UVs. I don't like it. I'm going to go to UVs, cylindrical mapping. And now already it's looking significantly better. So I'm actually very much happier with that. So now I have this nice little potted plant. I'm going to give it this some dirt. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to select that and I'm going to grab these guys. Shift, double click, shift, double click. UVs, planar mapping options from the Y, apply. All right, let me see. Oop. Assign a new material. I'm going to create a new material. This is going to be dirt. So Arnold AI standard. It's going to be dirt. Again, I like to label everything dirt. Grab this, file, grab that. And I already have a texture for dirt. So let me find it. There it is, open. So at least now that's going to look a little bit more like soil, which is going to sell it a little bit more. Go like that. Not too shabby, not bad. The whole purpose of this tutorial was to kind of show you really fast how to create alphas actually in Arnold. It's a new process. 
compared to mental ray. And there's a couple of places I could tweak. I can go into Photoshop and tweak it now. So let's go back to here. Let me open up my leaf that I was working with. My working file is in images. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my leaf color. So let me control click that. Select, modify, contract. Let me do two pixels this time. Control shift I, delete. So that's going to look a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and save. Control shift S. I'm going to go to my source images and change this into a TIFF. And I'm going to replace this one. No layers. Save. Yes. Okay. Up. Oh, didn't like it. That's okay. Control shift S. Source images. And this is going to be my TIFF. And I'm going to say color 2 just to make my life easier. No layers. Save. Okay back here, click on our little leaf, leaf standard, click on this to diffuse and grab that. It refreshes everything and now we, this looks a lot better. There's a couple other things we could add to this. We could add bump map, we can add specularity maps, we can do a lot more to this uh, item but that was just a really quick introduction on how to create transparencies in Arnold and also how to create a plant very very quickly. I Hope you found this useful and thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate it. Please subscribe to my channel, share my tutorials with your friends and let me know what I can do to make your art stronger. All right, I will see you next time.